right, so this goes for the uh, steel O21, the O25. This one's a 210 variant, same difference. Um, well, I'll start by getting the muffler off there, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the third one, that old adage, everything comes in threes. It had the same exact air leak between the bottom bearing cup and the cylinder. They've been leaking right down in there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you here. Right down where that ceiling surface is. When I pull the engine out, I'll show you, but right down in here. And that's the third one that's leaked in the exact same spot. It's important to keep the bearing cup tight on there so you can get to three of the head bolts, I guess you'd call them, that, that hold the two halves together. But this one you can't access because the handle. So all these I get in, I just put a hole right there so you can stick your torque wrench in there and snug it up without having to pull everything apart. Get this thing torn down. It's been a while since I've done this. It's been sitting on the bench for a long, way longer than it should have, but it's its time now. I'll try and do this so you guys can see. So this lever, choke lever, it'll just pull out. Could you raise the choke arm like that? This will usually just pull right out the end like that. Throttle rod, same way if you squeeze that. Just take your screwdriver and pop it up out of there. This one's got a little different tank vent set up than some of them. Most of them just have the little stub with the grub screws in and off of there, but it comes off of there. Pull your fuel line off. Few fuel everywhere. Off. And if you want to ensure you aren't far from fuel everywhere like that, you can either dump the fuel and be smart about it, or crack the tank, or just pull the fuel tank vent line off. That's got a direct breather straight in there, it usually won't push it out. There is a gasket and a plate in there. Be careful when you pull those off. Side cover. Now I see most of the stuff's pretty self-explanatory, but We'll do it anyways, and we have a record of it. These side covers are kind of funky. You gotta pull them out and down. That whole shroud goes up underneath the top cover there.
kill switch wires off. Get my, your torque head screws under here that hold the rear handle on. Screw right here. And all these plastic little side covers just pop out the little plugs that hold them on, hold the handle on inside the little AV buffers. Sometimes they come right out, sometimes they're kind of a pain. Ouch. These ones are being a pain today. Since I'm doing it on video, why wouldn't they be? And there's one more up under here. Pretty clean little saw, really. That one's smaller, it's easy to remember. It goes up in that top piece, but you have to remember, which I've not been it, that there's a screw, uh, screw inside of that buffer. off like that that separates from there the only thing holding everything else on is your intake boot it comes through the housing there you can push that in with your finger you use a screwdriver I don't know that I'd advise that but uh, usually use my finger works fine or even like a wood dowel something that won't puncture if you slip and it should come off of there there is a Impulse line. If you get that kind of loosened up, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'll try and get you to see, but there's your impulse line is in there. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that shot for you so you can see where it's at in there. But <clears throat> pull that off of the housing. This right up here. pushes off of that AV buffer. Sometimes it'll, that buffer will come out with it. Sometimes it comes off in the handle. Just depends on what you got. How the saw is feeling that day. Well, you can either pull the lines through first or you can push the whole rubber grommet through. Seems like I usually take my little tuning screwdriver and get that whole thing a little push there that's a little better and that comes off that's the reality of it it's been a while since I've done this to be honest with you Kind of lose touch of the little tips and tricks sometimes. Anyways, that's the handle assembly off. And then there's not much left to get the top handle part off. One screw inside of that AP mount. Get 
pops off in here. Another one of these mounts up front that's got to come off. Screw inside of there as well. And all those screws in there are all the same length for in the bottom of the handle and in all the AV points. So it's alright if you don't keep perfect track of where they come out of. You just pull these little screws out for the side cover around the clutch here for the chain brake components. That's almost always filthy in there, but clutch comes off. If you're lucky. You can see how gummed up. Anyways, you can see how much buildup gets inside of there. So I make a point of cleaning these out whenever I have them apart and make sure to grease up the bearing but just like that clutch drums off so once the drums off uh, as long as you still have a plug-in three-quarter socket there and all this convenient sometimes you have to use a they sell clutch tools but you can just make your own for whatever you need they'll fit in like that one would work. You know, they fit in in between the clutch shoes to get clutch off, but steel was gracious enough to put a cast in hex right there. So as long as the plug's still in, <clears throat> it's left hand thread, so clockwise takes it off, but quick zap of the impact and it'll spin right off of there. That's usually what they look like behind there. So your worm drive gear for the oil pump will come out. And they almost always look that nasty, so there is cleaning to do when you get in here. <clears throat> so that side's all disassembled. We can take flywheel side off. Same thing with flywheel. It's a right hand thread though, so counterclockwise like normal. 13 millimeter. That'll come off. Then it's up to you to pick your favorite style of clutch removal. Or clutch removal, flywheel removal. Uh, you can use a puller, you can use all kinds of stuff little drift that fits in the end. Pour it like that. Hold this with my two fingers. Give it a crack. It works. Or I've mentioned in other videos I just make these little knockers. The right size thread for the crack crankshaft. Throw them all the way on there. Hold the flywheel. Flywheel's off. I find that's about the easiest method. Uh, you know, by all means, if there's 
provisions to use a puller, you know, whatever the style may be, that's obviously your best bet, but a lot of other ways that work. So once that's off and you pull the, you don't really have to pull the coil, but I pull this, these two leads off here. For some reason with me, this one likes to walk away, so I always put it back in. So you can pull this off if you had to without removing this engine. It's possible, I've done it. But it's easiest to just pull the whole thing with it on there and then take it off after. So we'll pull those four bottom screws out. Just like that. So this is where I was saying it was leaking on the exhaust side right there. You can see the sealants blown out of it because it wasn't tight there. But anyways, that's where it's leaked. And this is the third one I've encountered like this. So, you know, I know there's flukes, but that's enough for me to call it a common issue with this style of saw. So my suggestion would be if you have one, then go out and snug them up or see if these bolts are snug. But anywho, aside from pulling the coil, that's the whole disassembly of the saw minus the chain brake but there's no reason to pull that apart so get it cleaned up and resealed and put it back together oh so this afterwards if you want you can just pull it it just pries right off of there no big deal impulse line goes through that lower hole and that covers off you're left with your intake boot and your impulse line so on these, those four bottom screws, you know, these guys that hold this in the case itself, they also are what clamp this together. So, I mean, it's glued. It's not going to, but just know that this right now you can, is going to come off of here. So I make sure to blow with some compressed air, carb cleaner, whatever you want. Get it all nice and clean around here. Wire brush, scotch bright. Whatever, get that area all clean so when you pull it apart, you know, this is your sealing surface and you clean it out after, but it's a lot easier if you have minimal to deal with. So the cleaner it is right now, the less chance for something getting trapped in there and causing another leak when you put it back together. And this will all be going in the parts washer, but I find the easiest way to get that bottom half off is just taking leverage that clutch side of the crank down and it'll usually pop free on one side and kind of do the same on the other just work it off there so that's what bearing cup crankshaft piston you can check your bearings while you're in there. You know, nothing, it's a little brown up here, but it's not discolored. Looks like it might have started getting a little bit hot, but I don't think so. It's not blue. Uh, all the main, all the bearings feel great. I believe on the, this one's newer, it's a 210. On the 021 and the 025 I did, they aren't caged bearings down here for the main bearing they're just open needle bearings so watch yourself when you i don't know if i mentioned that in a different video or not but when you pull that apart on those other saws all the needle bearings will fall out if you're not careful because there's no cage to retain them but there's your crank bearings and there's your crank seals and you know now's a good time cheap they don't cost anything. It's a good time to buy new seals. 
easy insurance. You'll put it all back together and have to tear it right back down again. Everything in there looks good. So we'll clean all that gasket goo off of there. And you can, I mean, it's hard to tell. Oh, I'll try and get it. It won't do it justice, of course. Never does. But anyways, right through here, you can see where the gasket material has just been barely, just ever so slightly pushed away. So it was leaking right through there. Can't, I mean, your eye can almost tell it, but you can tell from where I'm at, you can anyways. So we'll get it all cleaned up. Put some sealer of choice on there. I use uh, three bond 1194. Well, wherever I have it, it's hiding somewhere. But anyways, you can use anything. Yama Bond, Honda Bond, Durco. There's all kinds of it. 